Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Game Maker. There was a recent release with some major updates in it, and there was also a bit of a advisory on what is happening going forward. And this is an important time for Game Maker because uh, back at the end of January, they were purchased by Yo-Yo Games. So there's big questions of what is the future viability of Game Maker? Uh, what are we going to see going forward? And they have answered a number of those questions. Some of the answers are quite vague, as we're going to see, but nonetheless, we have some more details. By the way, I'd Around the same time that this announcement was happening, I actually tried out Opera GX. It's kind of a gimmicky browser aimed at, at uh, gamers, but Opera itself, uh, to be honest, still my daily driver. I really like this browser. So if you're thinking about checking it out, do so. Um, I did. I did a review on it. And I still like it to this day and age. So back to the Game Maker thing. Game Maker is an important game engine. It's been around. Uh, it's one of the longest running commercial 2D game engines out there, and it does seem like things are going strong. They're just releasing a 2.3.2 two version into beta um, all about performance there's new nine slice support in there nine slice is a way of cutting up images into basically their corners and the middle piece what this allows you to do is scale them out quite a ways it's great for uh, huds and, and ui kind of stuff um, because then you get nice consistent edging while you get uh, the ability to scale it up as big or small as you need on top of that they've got some performance improvements and so on they've got more localizations going on with russia chinese and brazilian portuguese all coming to the IDE soon. And perhaps the biggest part of this announcement, as you could probably tell from the title graphic, uh, they're soon going to be bringing uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox uh, Series X console support to Game Maker. Uh, it's currently in closed beta. It's expected in March of 2021. So if you are in the beta, uh, those two are available. There are some details about signing up for consoles, though. It's not as straightforward as just, okay, I want to make a game for those platforms. Uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit. So you do need a license there you need a commercial license for consoles and you need to have a developer agreement in place with the console holders also interestingly enough they are hiring and that's actually a really big deal because this is now they've got a new um you know, ownership group. So it's interesting to see what kind of support there is behind Game Maker going forward. And then they got some details. They're redesigning their inspector window. This is a preview of what it could potentially look like. And then they did a very large QA. And I'm just going to go through a handful of these things that I found that were most interesting here. Uh, one of the questions was about HTML5 support going forward, and they'll be constantly updating HTML5. Um, they're going to focus on 2D going forward. So 3D is not currently in the cards. And and they are refactoring and cons um, for uh, plugins. They are focusing on refactoring, and the consolidation needed to be done first. So there is no plugin support as of yet. Uh, and then we've got here again: 2D support is the future. Here, 3D isn't really their priority. Although every every 2D game engine in this day and age is technically a 3D game engine, uh, it's just not their priority. And I think that actually makes a lot of sense because if you need a 3D game engine right now, you are very, very, very well served. They should focus on doing 2D and doing 2D extreme well um so uh let's see uh open tk removal shouldn't really matter much that's more of a technical detail uh spine force uh spine is an ik bone based animation system for 2d sprites uh they are going to be getting uh the four point is currently in release uh in beta but when 4.0 is released they've got a new spine uh support coming there uh Update on the translations, next-gen console support. They've already announced that. So the Xbox Series X and S consoles, as well as PlayStation 5 support, currently in beta, coming in March. Uh, now, this one, I think, is actually the most interesting of the questions. And this is one of those things where if you're on the fence about buying um, Game Maker desktop right now, I, I just, I honestly have a hunch and, and nothing more than that, but a hunch that with Yo-Yo in charge and the way that business models have gone, we're going to see an indie free version in some way, shape or form. It could be HTML5 export only. That would make a ton of sense. It could be that you have it geared to income or whatever. I just feel with the way that the industry is aligning that they, they have to do this. You you can't charge an entry level fee for, you know, people to come in. You're, you're, you're alienating uh, users and that's just not the way the market prices anymore. So we've got this question and it kind of leads towards my hunch. So they're saying here, uh, we have a few requests to speak on price going forward. Uh, are we set on our current pricing model or our current prices set in stone? And it's to understand uh, people's concerns and preferences about pricing and uh, working and what's worked in the past and what hasn't. We're always willing to listen as an uh, as it's important area for everyone. The general rule with pricing is you can only charge what people are prepared to pay when they look at your product and other products that do the same thing. 
That one is a very key line. When they're now competing against the Godot game engine, which is available for free, uh, Unity game engine, which you can use for free up to a certain income threshold, and the Unreal engine, which not really great for 2D, to be honest, but you can use it for up to a million dollars. So yeah, you got a little bit of money to work with to make it better at 2D in that case. Uh, we're always evaluating our business model, although... Uh, when we make a decision, we have to balance it based on what works for the business, our customers, and strategy going forward. Nothing to announce at this time. Although, again, this line really, at least it, for one, it means that they're, they're aware of what their competition is and what their competition is or is not charging. And th they also know, I think, that they're leaving probably money on the table by having an entrance fee here. So uh, be interested to see where that goes there. Uh, should developers be worried about game privacy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, communicate more openly, uh, blah. Uh, now, this one is interesting here. Yo-Yo Games be getting more staff and resources. Now, this is key because, again, Opera purchased them. Uh, they used to be owned by, I believe it was a gambling company. Uh, so now the question is, will Yo-Yo um, be throwing resources behind them and the answer seems to be yes which is pretty cool um expand resources available to yo-yo games in the core tech to increase pr uh, production more features and more stability uh integrate or forcing game users to use opera no uh plans to update game maker marketplace and the yo-yo website yes um more updates coming um to the new 2.3 sequence of gml improvements sequences are now an integral part of game maker studio and any new feature added will be compatible with it uh, which is actually kind of nice uh uh, future announcements, nothing really here to announce. We're going to get into the roadmap in just a minute. And why was Opera interested in buying Yo-Yo Games and Game Maker? And then we're really passionate about games at Opera. We see Yo-Yo and Game Maker as an ideal acquisition to complement our global ambitions in gaming along with our Opera GX gaming browser. We're looking forward to grow this area of our business and can't wait to support and expand Game Maker in all areas. Uh, and then we're going to get into a little bit more kind of uh, direct questions they want to they want to ask nothing nothing huge here uh for the most part uh but now we're going to move on and this one is kind of interesting so are they hiring and the actually the answer is this is their jobs page there and you can see they've got they're hiring a test engineer a runtime test engineer a web developer a junior compiler engineer extensions engineer build engineer lead compiling engineer a growth marketing manager and a project manager so almost all of these jobs are actually in the uh, tech development make uh, game maker better kind of role. So that's actually pretty sweet. Like see them, they're actually hiring in developmental positions. So it does look like um, Opera is definitely putting some money behind Yo-Yo Games future development. And then back to the console thing. So right now you can actually run it on Switch. You can run it on um, the PlayStation and you can run it on the Xbox. And now with the new beta coming forward, you can run it on the Xbox um, Series X. When the name is getting so confusing. And the PlayStation 5. But the kicker is for all of those things, you have to be a registered developer. So here's the process for the Nintendo Switch. There is a process as well for the PlayStation. And then there is a process as well for the Xbox. Now, interestingly, they don't actually show the pricing for the uh, Xbox and PlayStation, but they do uh, for the Nintendo Switch. But ultimately, the ultimate version of Game Maker Studio uh, gets you all the, the compiler tools. So, so you can target Switch, um, Nintendo, sorry, uh, Switch, uh, Microsoft, and Sony's targets as well, including HTML and um, mobile, etc. So we do know that the ultimate price, pun not intended, is $1,500 per year uh, per seat. So that is uh, the, the most that you can ultimately pay. Right now, there is a Switch version. I believe there's a, a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox version as well that are $800 for just that single platform. Uh, but they don't specifically state it for Xbox um, or PlayStation 5. So I'm not sure what the deal is there, if anything's changing, or if that was just an oversight. Uh, but again, you can't just sign up and start developing for consoles. Unfortunately, they are locked down uh, behind a developer tier. Now, you might be able to develop for uh, UWP, which is... Um, kind of like the spiritual successor to uh, Xbox Indie, uh, but it's it's hard to say. Um, and then in terms of the roadmap, where things are going, this is the area we are at right now. So you're seeing here the, the console updates there, uh, nine slice patch support, a curve library, reduced in installer size and speed ups to the compiler, as well as various different bug fixes. Going forward into the next couple versions, we're going to see the asset uh, inspector one 
OpenTK, which is a, a, a UI library kit, it's being replaced, um, refactoring. So a lot of kind of core stuff. And then you're seeing Google Ma um, Google mobile ads and then Facebook extensions coming in there. And then going forward into the future, again, more improvements to the Asset Inspector. Uh, Metal, uh, runtime, Metal is uh, Vulcan for Apple products, basically. Uh, console updates, again, mobile OS upgrates and uh, more details on the extensions and, again, on the extension. So there's not not really a ton basically being showcased here about new features or things that are coming soon, but you get an idea of what they're working at over at Game Maker. So that is it. That is the, uh, I don't know what we're going to call this one. I guess it's the 2.3.2 release and kind of a, a future update of what is going on in the world of Game Maker. Now, it's not something I normally would cover uh, a relatively minor release like this, but the fact that this is the first real major update since they were purchased by Opera uh, and some, you know, a bit of a QA about how things are going. Uh, plus, of course, the... Um, the next gen games are, are pretty sweet too, so that's that's nice, and that's uh, coming very very soon. Uh, again, the part that I found most interesting in all of it is question number six: this thing about pricing. And I would love to hear what your opinion is as well. Do you think Game Maker can continue to make it work with their current pricing? I actually kind of think we're almost sitting at a weird way where they got to make their entrance level. They need to have a free tier. It's just. It just needs to happen. It could be tied to income or whatever. Now, what's interesting with Game Maker, though, compared to a lot of other game engines, is it's got a very hobby, never going to make a commercial game uh, focus. So though they would just straight out lose all of that money. So basically, the kind of sales that they generally probably would make on Steam probably would really hurt for having a free tier. Uh, but it would be nice to actually have like a learning edition that came with preloaded with a bunch of assets and courses and tutorials and such that you could aim at the indie market. And then what I would suggest is potentially make it more expensive to develop on consoles. You know, an $800 license fee for uh, a Nintendo, Nintendo Switch or Xbox or PlayStation 5 is probably technically a little bit too low. So they could make up some more of the money on that end. And if you get more developers working with Game Maker Studio because you've got an, more uh, approachable uh, entry level, then you could start charging for those things. And I think theoretically they could start charging for mobile. They could keep charging for mobile as well. But charging for the base package in this day and age, it's just insane to me. Uh, but I'd love to hear what your opinion is. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.